Hi and welcome to uh, Pittman's Pumpkin Patch, Pittman's Garden Patch. It's June 20th, 2013 and I figured I'd give you an update. Uh, let's start off in here in this uh, raised bed full of pumpkins, Peppo family uh, variety pumpkins. On the left side here I have um, all the way to about where that marigold in the pot is. All of that in here is uh, Howden pumpkins and over there are Mr. Wrinkles both in the Peppo family. You see the Mr. Wrinkles has definitely taken off a lot better than the uh, Howdens have but the some of the Howdens are doing really good like this one right here is uh, you know, doing pretty good and if we look down in here we can see you know male flower buds and I know they're males because there's no uh, fruit underneath it okay and uh, you know, it has some tansy plants in the uh, buckets here, and that's supposedly supposed to keep away uh, moths and uh, beetles and things like that. So some of these uh, are trying to catch up and do their best to look like the other ones. For a while, the wrinkles weren't taken off, but now they're really going. Um, so you can see the Mr. Wrinkles pumpkins over here, doing really nice. Okay, and. Uh, uh, thankfully they haven't as far as I know they have not been attacked by the squash vine borer moth yet though I did see one the other day attacking these these are my Boston marrow uh, squash slash pumpkins <laughs> and I you know didn't look like the traditional uh, one that you photos that you see online uh, but when I saw it kind of looks like a bee or a wasp or whatever but it was laying on a leaf and I thought well that can't be a bee or wasp they generally don't land on leaves you know, they go for flowers. Uh, so, uh, needless to say, I came back later on that evening and went egg hunting. And uh, sure enough, I found about three or so eggs. And I usually lay one single re brownish reddish colored egg, very tiny, usually at the base, near the base of the uh, plant. But I have seen them over the years uh, at the uh, top of a leaf and stalk area where the uh, stalk comes up and then the leaf is at the, at the top of the stalk. I have found them right there at the top, near the top of the stalk. So you've got to also look for them there, but mainly at the base of the uh, plant. Uh, here's a zucchini plant here. And unfortunately, there are no male flowers to pollinate this female that bloomed this morning. You can see down at the base of the petals of the yellow petals, there's the green zucchini down there. So that's a female. And if we go and look on the inside, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. And you see all the parts right there, and that's the um, stigma. And uh, so you can see all the segmented parts and everything of there. So that's a neat uh, thing to come. And I knew this was going to open because um, the petals last night had turned a good shade of yellow, which told me that these, this was going to bloom the next morning. And sure enough, it did. And now I did have a couple pumpkin flowers that did that last year, and they still didn't open up the next morning. So. 99% of the time, that's your sign that your male or female flowers will bloom the next morning uh, on uh, flowers, uh, plants that are in the cucurbits family, like cucumbers, watermelons, zucchinis, pumpkins, squash, all that kind of stuff. So anyhow, this is my tool material the, that's used to make wedding veils. And uh, this is to keep the squash vine borer moth out now that I know that he's active, that that moth is out. He's really going after these uh, Boston marrow squash slash pumpkins because uh, th these are doing tremendously healthy. And uh, one thing I discovered about this Boston marrow uh, yesterday, I called up the Landreth Seed Company because uh, I was reading online that these have vines that grow up to you know 15, 14, 16 feet or so. And I'm like, when I looked on the back of the package, it said this was a bush type variety. So that's why I planted them here in these big bad beds so I could, you know, just stake them and contain them and they would be fine. Well, when I called them up and I said, what's the deal? What's the, what's the real story? And he said, well, those, uh, it says that it's a bush variety on the, back, on the back of the seed pack. doesn't mean that the seeds themselves in that pack are a bush variety. It's just saying that those, if you were to have a bush variety, these are the general uh, growing guide directions. I'm like... You know, well, I, I wish I'd have known that 
because I did I planted these in a certain spot thinking they were bush and now I got to build a trellis now where I wasn't thinking I was going to have to for this for these and that's where this wood that I purchased at Home Depot last night is uh, comes into play these are um, one by two by eights these are true eight foot lengths and these are pressure treated and you might be thinking oh no not pressure treated don't you know don't do that well uh, these are not going to go in the soil so you don't have to worry about leaching these are going to be attached to the uh, to the um, pallets here they're going to be screwed in there and or, or into the sides of the raised beds and uh, that's how I'm going to make my trellises on the uh, outside and just kind of guide the vines to them and work them up and I'm using wood because it's a little bit heavier and it's going to be able to support these heavier pumpkin plants without you know the net trellising is not going to be able to do it that's just temporarily up there um, but I'm going to take that out and make and do a wood one all right so uh, here's some blueberries that are not doing very well this year uh, it's my first year trying I haven't really gotten any blueberries I mean I've taken a few off here that look like they were ready to eat and everything but when I bit inside they were still green uh, but it didn't taste that bad so they're probably fairly close unless blueberries are supposed to be green on the inside of some of them but uh, <laughs> uh, some of these uh, they, these two right here uh, both sweetheart varieties of blueberries this one on the left produced maybe three or four berries though I never got to really eat much of them this one produced not a flower not one flower and it's the same kind and they these are all pretty much the same and these are the same age and everything so I don't know if this is just a bad year for blueberries I don't know the pH is right because I, I, I make sure that I set up the soil and check the pH before I, I transplanted them in there and I had a special fertilizer made for acidic loving plants so everything was right there so tomato plants not doing very great uh, these are the ones I started back uh, seeds in the side of the house with a uh, grow light. Uh, I do have tomatoes growing, but the leaves themselves are very, well, I mean, you can see yourselves. They're all curled up, and they're just not really opening up. The uh, plants aren't getting very tall. You know, just all, just not very healthy looking. I mean, look at these. Just sad. Just sad looking. Now I know they were attacked by aphids, and I've been out there trying to do my best to get a hold of them. Uh, soapy water usually does the trick, and uh, mix that with uh, some neem oil, and that'll that'll be good. Uh, but I have beef steaks and uh, organic ar um, Roma tomatoes in here. I will have to stake a few of these here fairly soon, as they are starting to. You can see I have a lot of Roma tomatoes on this one. You know, it's like a, so um, see here's one of my beef steaks and it's got one single tomato on it and there's nothing else because this thing is so puny okay look at this just puny and uh, here's another beef steak one on here I go to my dad's garden over at his house and his tomatoes are and his cucumbers are just going crazy. It looked like a jungle, you know, and I'm just so jealous of him. <laughs> he's just like, son, I don't know what to tell you. When I ask him how he, he gets his like that, so I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> just years of experience. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, in this bed right here, you know, I have some cucumbers, uh, three or four cucumber plants, some watermelons, and I have, and this is a, a healthy tansy plant right here it's supposed to keep away moths and stuff like that and other things that you don't want in your garden put up this nylon netting because cucumbers can work well with this they'll be okay on this the strength of this kind of nylon uh, trellis so I built this all up here with PVC pipes and zip ties and things like that but again here's the tool material and I was doing it to keep the squash vine board moth out but after a little more research, I just want, uh, there's a claim that they don't really go after cucumbers or melon uh, plants. But I know they definitely love pumpkins for sure. Gosh, they love them. And uh, so that's my num number one enemy is the squash vine borer moth. Devastating. All right, so I have, um, you can see the one cucumber there that's... Uh, 
I got the sun there. It's right there in the center of the picture. That's I attached that to the uh, trellis and everything. And the these have tendrils already growing on them, of course. And tendrils look like little cat whiskers. Or um, I guess the birds are saying, "Get out!" Because we want some of your blueberries. <laughs> um, hopefully, you can see that. Looks like that right there in the center screen. A little looks like a little cat whisker or spaghetti, and that's a um, tendril. And they're on the pumpkin plants too, and everything. And they and there's one there at the base of the PVC pipe at the bottom of that nylon string there, and it's wrapped itself around that. And it helps the um, the tendrils help grab on to things and help pull the plant and give it some st uh, stability and everything like that. So that's what the, what the tendrils do. I have uh, you know some bell pepper plants in there, not doing all that great. I got one or two bell peppers growing everything, though. Uh, so I've been feeding some compost tea to try to get these things to come alive, and it seems to be slowly working. Um, and they're a little bit more green than what they were, so it's slowly coming along. I got some more compost tea brewing. Uh, like I said, blueberry rabbit, this rabbit eye blueberry bush over here it's a climax both of these are this one here and this one here and these are not doing very well these berries are just so puny and uh, not healthy at all the plant even looks like it's dying I mean these leaves are getting all brown and now this one is healthy all nice and green for the most part but again these berries are very tiny and not doing a whole lot and I didn't want to do any transplanting out of these nursery pots because uh, it's in the middle of the growing season. I didn't want to, didn't want to kill it. Uh, my blackberries are coming along. Um, they are still, as you can see, uh, these are still red right now. So definitely not ready. Uh, ready, but I got quite a few of them growing. Some, some are not really producing anything yet, but uh, and they may not this year, but others are. And then you can see my blackberries. Uh, around the area here and um, so I got them attached to a two wire trellis system that I built and uh, they're doing pretty good on that and uh, so that's I'm going to definitely use the tool to cover those to keep the birds off uh, and then this bed right here that's covered with tool material to keep the squash vine border out the moth is um, these are more pumpkin plants and these are Cinderella's and Big Macs now I believe the Big Macs are over here and just just it's kind of crazy here's my hand right there look at the size of the leaves just just monsters you know look at that dwarfed <laughs> so I believe these are my Big Macs on this side and the Cinderella's over there Big Macs are doing slightly a little bit better but some of the Cinderella's are coming along beautifully too and these are in the Maxima family and the ones over there that I showed you earlier in that long bed right there, those are Pepo family. And another thing I discovered about the Boston Marrow over there is that those are in the Maxima family also. I thought they were Pepos, but they're Maximas. And you might think of Maximas, Pepos, who cares? Well, if you do any kind of hand pollinating, or even with bees, it, it makes a difference. Because you cannot cross-pollinate or use the pollen from the Maxima family uh, pumpkins or squashes or whatever to pollinate Pepo family and you can't do Pepo to Maxima doesn't work that way but you can go Pepo to Pepo and Maxima to Maxima in other words I could use the Mr. Wrinkles Pepo pollen to pollinate a uh, Howden because it's in the Pepo family also there uh, I can also use Big Max pollen to pollinate Cinderella's or Cinderella's to Big Max because they're in the Maxima family but I can't go Maxima to Pepo or Pepo to Maxima so that's why this zucchini over here, this female zucchini I showed you earlier, that flower and everything that opened up, is going to go off or not because there's no male flowers to pollinate. So it's going to go to waste. But I'm leaving it open just that tr uh, the, the uh, tool just to see if it can attract some uh, beneficial insects to get it to come to my uh, garden area. Uh, so anyhow. Just wanted to kind of show you that. Don't have too many peppers growing. So it's kind of hit or miss. The pumpkins are taking off. Tomatoes, eh. You know. Some things are good. Some things aren't. 
I was going to use the tool to, uh, once I build these trellises out of wood for the heavy duty pumpkins, because the nylon's just not going to hold it. Uh, I was going to use the tool to cover the, um, the uh, trellis and everything to keep the plants protected from the squash vine border moth. But after trying to get this situated here, uh, you know, I took, uh, this is the widest kind of, uh, the widest tool I could find. It was nine feet wide, and I put two pieces together with Velcro, and it still wasn't wide enough to, to really blanket this whole trellis system and everything effectively. And so I'm just like, you know what? And then, I, like I said, I, I researched and found out that uh, squash vine borders moss generally don't go after cucumbers or melons. So I'm just going to probably take this off and use this material for, you know, covering the blackberries or something like that. So I was going to sit there and use this to cover my trellises for the pumpkins, like I said. But after seeing what I did with this cucumbers, and this does not gonna, doesn't look like it's going to be uh, long, wide enough to ha handle the job that I wanted to do. Um, um, so I'm going to do other things like people suggested online. Wrap your the base of your pumpkin plants or whatever with aluminum foil or nylon stocking to keep the squash vine borer moth from laying its egg and so I will do that and hope hope that that will you know do a good job of deterring it also what I may do is I might leave the tool on the plants and then as the plants start to vine out I'll when the vine you know gets to the edge you know the raised bed I, I might pull the tool back just enough to let the vine come out and then go up the trellis and train it to go up the trellis you know I might do something like that that you know but we'll see anyhow uh, a lot of things to do and then finding out that uh, the owner of this house because we rent this one we just got here back in October uh, just found out yesterday that the owner now wants to put the house back up for sale again you know, I'm like, are you kidding me? I'd spent all this time, all this work and effort and money and everything to get all this stuff done. Been busting my tail for quite some time and then to find out that, uh, oh my gosh, they, they want to put the house up for sale. You know, I'm just, I'm going to try to just put that out of my mind and keep on doing my growing and just deal with what I got to deal with when it comes time. So, if anyone has any good, uh, sources of uh, feed bags, large feed bags, so I can put the soil in there and take it with me because I don't want to, you know, I spend a lot of time and money with the soil. I want to definitely give it away. If I can bag it up as much as I possible and take it with me, that would be awesome. So, uh, anyhow, from Pittman's uh, Pumpkin Patch, Pittman's Garden Patch, I will talk at you later. Things are looking good for some things and things aren't looking so good for others. Um, I'll talk at you later. Bye.